Once you were old enough, what were the dark family secrets you were finally let in on? My grandfather killed his youngest brother to get out of going to Vietnam. He, his brother, and two of their friends had their numbers called in the draft for Vietnam. They didn't want to go, obviously, but they didn't come from money and all worked to support their families. If they got arrested, they'd lose their jobs and their families would lose their income. So they decided on a different plan to get out of going. They would drive to get their medical checks together, and on the way there, they would drive the car into a tree. The plan was to get too injured to get sent to war, but not so injured as to be permanently crippled, and it had to look like an accident so nobody got arrested. This was in country Western Australia, so they were all going to say they swerved to miss a kangaroo, and hit the tree. My grandfather was driving, his friend was in the passenger seat, and the other two were in the back. His brother was behind the passenger seat. They hit the tree doing about 40 kilometers per hour, enough to be serious. A broken leg for my grandfather, a broken arm for the guy behind him, and broken ribs all around. They definitely weren't going to war. The problem was that for maximum impact, and because this was rural Australia in the 60s, they weren't wearing seat belts. And nobody found them or their car for an hour or so. And nobody considered internal injuries in this plan. And my grandfather's brother bled to death from a ruptured spleen in the back seat. He was dead before they got to a hospital. My grandfather never forgave himself, and he never talked about it. My grandma was the only one he ever told, as far as we know, and she didn't tell my mother and I until long after his death. We found a small box in their bedroom when we were cleaning out the house after she died last year. It had a clipping from the local newspaper at the time about the accident. It said that they had swerved to miss a rue, and called it a tragedy. I don't think my mother told any of her siblings, so technically this is still the family secret. I guess now you're all in on it. My grandfather got out of serving in Vietnam by robbing pharmacies and going to jail for years. Wow! Mine got out of it by telling the Navy that he could type, so he remained stateside and typed reports or something for his unit. He said he was one hell of a two-fingered typist. Not very much a secret, but took me until I was older to understand what was happening. My mom would sometimes have us play a game called Army which consisted of me, my mom, and my siblings army crawling around our apartment. Kind of a hide and seek style game. She would yell, hit the deck. Randomly and we would all drop and find a hiding spot. We would giggle and giggle while my mom army crawled around looking for us. We loved the game so much. I realized a few years ago while retelling the story that we lived in a really terrible neighborhood, and she would yell it out when she heard gunshots outside the building. I'm assuming she was worried about stray bullets. Edit. I shared everyone's amazing comments with my mom, and she shed a tear. She feels much appreciated on International Women's Day today. Your mom is a effing G. War vet, single mom of three, worked her way up in life from bartending to union plumber foreman to owning her own gunsmithing shop with my stepdad. She's a strong woman. Pretty effing smart way to teach kids how to duck and cover without scaring the hell out of them. She did a great job to shield us from the negatives of our financial situation. Definitely admire her for it. When I was about 10 my cousin and his dad died. I always thought it was an accident and on the same day. When I was old enough I was told that his dad actually committed suicide and my cousin followed him couple months later. Truly devastated me although I didn't know them well. Edit. Thank you for the warm words and also for sharing your similar stories with me. I've read all the replies. My grief is still there because I understand that with professional help both would maybe still be here today. It just wasn't common to seek help back then. I hope all of you are well. I'm so sorry. I know of a similar story. When I was a senior in high school, 2006 to 2007, one of my classmates lost her dad to suicide over winter break. Poor girl was so close to him, and it took her a couple of months to feel mentally okay enough to come back to school. She had just gotten back into a regular school routine when one day, she was pulled out of class, her older brother had committed suicide. That was it for her, and she finished her schoolwork at home for the rest of the year. Obviously, it was beyond devastating for her, her older sister, and their mother. And it broke our hearts that while the rest of us were doing prom, prepping for graduation and college, 
etc., she was at home wrestling with deep grief. From what I can tell on Facebook, they are all doing well today, but man. I can't imagine what it was like to be the people most directly affected by that situation. That my cousin was actually my half-brother. Mom got pregnant in college and my aunt and uncle adopted him. And, that my dad wasn't my biological father. Mom and dad got divorced, she got pregnant by another man, and my dad wasn't able to have kids of his own so they got remarried and he raised me as his own. There are two posts here about a cousin that is also a half-brother. And if you put the two together, what do you get? A full brother. My uncle is believed to have murdered two Australian police officers in the late 80s. Holy crap. Walsh ST? Yep. Peter McAvoy. I met Peter at an RSL club I worked at in Newcastle and had quite a few interactions with him. He was playing the pokies the first time I met him and I saw his surname on his member's card when I went over for a payout and said I had friends that were McAvoy's and maybe he was related and he said he was estranged from his family because he was accused of doing something very bad that he didn't do. I was like oh I'm okay. Then I googled him. This is nuts. I've never met him and don't think I ever will. This isn't two Redditors finding each other online you normally see on our slash two Redditors one cup but it sure as hell deserves to be on there. Reddit link. Not so much let in on, as we found out by accident, but apparently my dad's first love and he got into a serious car crash when he was 25 and she died. He lived with her father for years after her death. He still occasionally comes to visit my dad, even 30 years later. We were always told he was a mentor until my sister pressed my mom on the subject. One of my sisters is even named after the girl that died, middle name and we never even knew about her until last year. None of us has ever brought it up with him. My friend was engaged to his first love in their early 20s when she passed from cancer. Ten years later, he got married to an amazing woman who honored his late fiancé in their wedding ceremony. Not a dry eye in the place. Oh, man that's awesome and heartbreaking all in one. The woman he married is a good human. I hope they have a long and awesome marriage. The reason I had a live and babysitter when I was 5 that moved in at 2 a.m. was because my mom's cousin killed two kids and we ended up harboring his daughter during the trial. He's the only person on death row in my county. What happened to her after? My brother swears she stole my mom's jewelry and ran off. Run off. Mom says she didn't. But I'm pretty sure she's in town with kids of her own. Your mom's cousin wasn't bona fide, that's for sure. My grandma retired and she still decided to work for her brother in his restaurant to save up money for when she dies. Funerals are, obviously, expensive. She insisted he would hold on to her paychecks and pay for her funeral when she dies. He never did. What a effing butthole how did the funeral end up being paid for? I think another family member paid for it. And the spot on a cemetery has to be paid for after the first 10 years for another decade. My mom was trying to sue her uncle to pay for it. But they only had a verbal agreement about the funeral, so it wasn't successful. My dad did a whole load of work for a family member who said that he'd use some of the money he'd have paid my dad to buy the headstone. He didn't. My dad's headstone was repossessed. Headstone repossession is a new low. I am sorry to even know such a thing can happen. I think this is the crappiest one to actually exploit your elderly sister that way. I don't know why but this is the worst but it's horrible to me. Because it's callous and a decision purely based on greed. It pushes aside what should have been decades of familial love for, what, $10-20k? That's it? The price of a new car? It's low, shameful, and slimy. To me this is the worst story on here. My heart sinks and I mourn for that man's parents when I read about this and hope they never got a chance to hear about how their son acted towards his sister. My grandparents spent some time in lockup after my grandpa killed their newborn in a shell shock induced frenzy. They were jailed because they buried her body in a cave and tried to hide it. My mom and her siblings were all adopted out very young and went back to their parents around 11 years or so later. I knew that growing up, but didn't know why until I was older. 
That's so terribly sad. A genuine tragedy. I can understand why they wouldn't tell you until you were a little older. I wish in a way they would have told me when I was younger as I think it would have allowed me to understand my grandma better. She was nice, but extremely detached. Going to hers for a visit was sitting there talking amongst yourselves while she read a romance novel. You could occasionally get a response but you'd usually have to really pull her away. The only time she wasn't reading was when we would be actively out buying new books for her. This was a monthly outing, weekly for her, but a different aunt's responsibility each week. We'd get her engaged all the way to the store. Where she'd buy a book to be completely engrossed in when we went out for lunch. I do get the quiet though, just wish I could have helped her, she was obviously escaping reality. Oh my goodness. This is also really sad. Now I can totally see how you wish you would have known. Detachment and escapism are definitely coping mechanisms for some people, but it's just extra sad that she had children and grandchildren who clearly loved her and wanted to connect with her, but that she just couldn't bridge the gap. At least you are finally able to put her behavior into a context where it makes sense, and can understand that she wasn't cold as much as hurt. Better late than never, I hope. My mum used to hide in her books as well. It took me years to realize that in doing so she was effectively trying to hide from reality. To put it shortly, my family tree is more like a very long branch. Yes, we have the genetic defects to prove it. That's not uncommon where I'm from. Hundreds of tiny isolated rural communities with little easy access led to a lot of accidental inbreeding. World-class geneticists flock to my province to study all the weird crap that pops up. It's gotten to the point that people in other nations have found out their family was from here when they get a disorder or defect that was only present in this one family from this certain bay. That's really interesting. I won't ask for an example disorder since that might reveal your location, but it's interesting there's such highly unique mutations in humans. It's no worries, I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. And yeah it's fascinating. But the big thing is that the relative isolation of NL allowed for certain traits to be effectively isolated, making them seem more unique. It usually shows up in certain types of cancer, like how in my family colon cancer has been hereditary, but it's also often rare types of heart disease, hemophilia, or a high prevalence of syndromes like Bardet by Edley. It's not been so bad in recent years due to more people having to travel for work, but it still exists. Didn't Iceland develop an app for checking if you are related to, one night stands to prevent this kind of thing? So more like a family wreath? That is how one of my high school friends came to be. His grandfather is his dad. My maternal grandparents are cousins and their parents are cousins as well. My mom was almost married off to her cousin and now one of my aunties wants to take me or my twin as a bride for her son when we grow up. We live abroad and she lived in UK, we are from South Asia and she keeps insisting we move to London with her for further studies. Bitch no I didn't even know my four cousins existed I am not moving in with them. One last thing, she expects me and my sis to move in with her to study and also help her around her home. You want free slaves, it ain't me. My cousins used to stay with us a lot, I remember my male cousin was a just a small baby when he first came to us. He would scream and scream and scream all night, and mom put him in my room so I used to spend the night cuddling him or playing peekaboo. My other cousin was my age, five, at the time. I found out later, my auntie was a heroin addict and a sex worker. My cousins were the result of clients and my male cousin was actually born whilst my auntie was heavily using and he was going through withdrawal after his birth. My grandparents ended up flying in from Wales and taking custody of them as well as putting my auntie on a plane and leaving with all of them. It was one of the saddest days of my life that I never understood. I thought they were going to be my brother and sister and wasn't sure why all of a sudden they were taken from me. Edit, wow, thank you so much for the awards. I've just woken up and have loads to read through. For those asking, my auntie made it out of that life. She prefers to be alone and doesn't have anything really to do with the family. She still lives in the same village as my grandparents. Them being taken was always something that upset me so much but was swept under the rug so much I thought I was being dramatic? Seeing all your comments is so validating and I thank you for that. So sad to read this. How are they doing now? My male cousin is doing super well. We are still very close he came to my wedding last year in Australia. 
My female cousin unfortunately has succumbed to a similar lifestyle as my auntie and has disconnected herself from the family. I think she went through some pretty heinous stuff when she was being bounced around through foster homes before us so she's got a lot of darkness. That my grandpa molested all the women in our family, not just me, and they let it happen because that's just what you do. When my grandfather molested me, young adult at the time, my grandmother literally got down on her knees and begged me not to tell because it would bring shame to the family. Sorry, Graham, he brought shame to the family with his actions. It's not my duty to protect him or your reputation. That's terrible, what happened afterwards? Did you say something? I told my mom but didn't really want to tell anyone else. I was so confused and didn't want to hurt my gram at the time. Mom, bless her, took the initiative, and spoke out as did my dad. Dad, in fact, informed his entire family, it was his father, and it indeed tore them all apart. However, it brought to light the fact that my grandfather had molested his daughter years ago, along with her friends and many other young women. His reputation was entirely ruined and my grandmother was furious. She still believes slash claims that he wasn't in his right mind when he did those things. She's just in denial and probably will be until she dies. He passed away a couple years ago while I was out of state. I had forgiven him and visited him one last time, but I was kind of glad I didn't have to attend his funeral. I don't know what I would have said. I am so sorry for what not only your grandfather did to you but also for the further pain caused by the rest of your family. I really respect and admire your incredible courage and the tenacity of your parents to protect you just like any parent should. That is one of the saddest, most backward things I've ever heard. I'm sorry X. That is actually what you effing don't ever do. Holy crap, thanks for all the awards. And F you grandpa, and also Uncle Roy from the other thread. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.